unarmed 20 year old black man, uh, shot and killed by cops on August 30th. The officer Brett Dobbin was home around two in the morning to arrest him on three separate charges domestic violence, assault, and improper handling of a firearm. Now, folks, uh, I want to warn you about this body cam video I'm about to show you because it is disturbing and can be triggering. Uh, and so, what happened was uh, Officer Ricky Anderson fired the fatal shot um, at him. Now, we couldn't find a picture of Anderson who has been on administrative leave since the shooting. Uh, but uh, this is the body cam footage of the cops were entering uh, the, uh, the home. And he, well, this is what happened. Yeah, there's somebody yeah. back there. That dog's going to bite you if you don't come out. I'll move up. Okay, I'm with I'm you. I'm with you. Somebody got taken. Uh, he's got gun wall. Door shot. Door shot. Uh, knocking him up. Here, I'm gonna lock him up. Here. Brady, I'll get another car. Here. You want to watch that? I'm just down, worried about the back. I don't have that. No, no. We're gonna send that dog in. That's 4399 on my hands. Hands, hands. Oh, He's got some in his hand. Some in his hand. Hands, hands, hands. Hands, hands, hands. Hands. Let me see your right hand. Crawl out here. Crawl out. Crawl out. Crawl out here. Get your hands up. All right, cover me. I'm going to go in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But I mean... I need cuffs. I'm out of cuffs. Here, here. Hands behind your back. Do it now. Hands behind, hands behind your back. Hey, Call for a 24. Hands. 43 hands. Start at 24. Mm -hmm. Get your hand behind. Stop resisting. He's pulling away. Uh, 104. Yes. We're on the three. Stomach. Okay. Okay. We got near that. Yes. S43, what do you need a medic for? S43, we need a medic in here. Officer involved. No, we have servos. All right. Glove up, start rendering aid. Don't move, bud. I have gloves. I don't know where they went. There's two cars that are here. We have people that need to pay. We need gloves. That's my thing. I'll take your seat. About else. Pat him down, pat him down, make sure he's good. Hold on, bud. All right, let's get him out to the medic. You want to carry him out? Yep. Jack, yeah, grab his feet. You're all right, buddy. You're all right. We got that. We're coming We're out. Coming out. We're coming out. Watch coming out. out with him. We need those guys detained in there. Yep. Or yeah. in a car. Sure. One, two. One, two. I'm two Vicks off of that. Hold on. I can't hold on. So. Good go. At a news, Donovan's mother and brother talked about the kind of person he was. Donovan had the biggest heart. Um, you'll hear that over and over again from many different people who touched him in his life in different places and in different ways, whether it's a teacher, a coach, one of his best friends. Um, he cared about others. He was active in, um, in the community, both volunteering alongside the rest of us. And he also, he, he wanted other people to be well. 
whether he didn't have anything himself he would share the the last of whether it would be food money whatever he had to make sure that others were safe and, and protected to the best of his ability uh, the last week has been very tough it was like there's a plethora of like emotions like from being sad to angry to fear like the fear that it can happen to you as well like it's 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 not okay and over the time I've been able to grieve and reflect and I've been looking at pictures of Donovan and I and there's one picture that stands out like and it's a uh, it's Donovan in I think like 2015, and he's at uh, he's at a protest, and right here. it's yeah right here, and it's it's crazy to see that someone who's passionate and adamant about those type of things like that can happen to them as well. Like he knew like this is not something like this is not something that he was oblivious to. We we know these things happen, but we're still here asking the same questions. Why like? We put in money, we put in manpower, like, and nothing changes ever. It's the same thing. Like, as people said last week, last week was the third police shooting in 10 days. Like, it's not okay. Like, things do need to change, and I, like, you know, we all know it. Ray Elliott is the Lewis family attorney. He joins us right now from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Rex, glad to have you on the show. This Thank is you. what... Uh, this is what I always go back to. Daddy, how can police apprehend someone without having to shoot and kill them? Yeah, you break it out a little bit, but um, you know, the reality is in this situation, there were so many things wrong, Roland, that, that had to happen for this 20 year old kid to be shot and killed, unarmed kid to be shot and killed, uh, serving warrants in the middle of the night on a misdemeanor charge, even the, the the alleged felony charge was a year old. There was no emergency for this in the middle of the night. They created a chaotic situation uh, that deteriorated really quickly. And then at the end of the day, Roland, the, the reality is that police officer opened that door and, and Donovan was trying to get out of bed in response to police commands. They were telling him to come out he was getting out of bed and he shot and killed him. And there's just no call for it whatsoever. And then after he was shot and killed, the manner in which they treated this kid, they treated him like a piece of meat. He, he should have been rendered aid immediately. They should have had him. They had a fire station right across the street. They could have had first responders there right away. Instead, they messed around. They accused him of a resisting arrest when we, he couldn't even move. And they dragged him out of the house. It's just absolutely despicable what happened here. So, I, two o'clock in the morning. I, I, I don't understand that. I, you can't do that at four o'clock in the afternoon or six p.m. I, I I don't get that. I don't get it either, and it's got to stop. The, the The chief police here in Columbus, Ohio, Elaine Bryant, immediately after this said that it's important to serve these in the middle of the night to ensure that uh, the people that they are seeking are at home. Um, reality is, that's nonsense. Ar arrest warrants are served in daylight hours all the time. Heck, there are judges and magistrates that refuse to sign a warrant unless it's being executed during the daylight hours. There was no reason for this to happen in the middle of the night other than the fact that they knew that they were going into an underserved minority community. And, it, and it's my theory that their hope was that they'd find additional illegal activity there. There was no reason for it. Had this happened at 10 o'clock in the morning in the broad daylight, none of this would have happened. Or or even do it at 9 p.m. I mean, if you're saying this is sure someone's home, but the idea 2 a.m., we could talk about the cases out of Minneapolis, we talk about cases all over the place. Individuals are sleeping, and they pull the covers up. Cops say, oh, we saw a flash. It ended up being a cell phone. If you wake somebody up, the natural instinct, if, if somebody busts in and I'm dead asleep, I got two cell phones right next to my bed. My phone stay right next to me. If, if cats bust in, 
My natural inclination is to grab my phone and call the cops. 100%. And think about this 20-year-old kid, too, who, by the way, was a social activist here in Columbus. He was protesting a police shooting in 2015. He, he was passionate about these types of issues. And here you have a 20-year-old black kid in an underserved uh, community who is woken up in the middle of the night, 2.30 in the morning, with dogs bearing down on his room, multiple police officers with weapons. He's behind that door. He's sound asleep. He wakes up at some point. It's one of two things. He, they either rouse him out of his sleep, you know, he looks confused in the video, or they get him up a little earlier because he hears the dog barking and the kid's terrified behind that door because the kid knows what happens to black kids in America these days. He's heard the stories. He's seen the stories. I think you're 100% right. Even at 9 p.m., something like this doesn't happen. So what, what were the people charged? What were they for? Yeah, I, again, you're breaking out a little bit. Um, but, <laughs> you know, the, the, chart, the chart is here. What were they for? I'm sorry, you broke out. Uh, the charges. Yes, the charges that they were there for, allegedly, we know of, was a uh, misdemeanor domestic violence, which was which was misdemeanor. It was not a serious charge at all, and it was disputed. The other was a uh, allegedly a gun charge um, from a year earlier, where Donovan was in the car with some other passengers. Police pulled the car over. Everybody else in the car took off, and Donovan, Donovan stayed at the scene like he was taught to do. A gun was found in the car, and he was charged with uh, possession of a firearm. It wasn't even his. None of these allegations obviously have been proven. That allegation, even the gun charge, was a year old. There, there was no danger whatsoever, no reason, no exigent circumstance, no emergency to serve this warrant at 2.30 in the morning and literally create the chaotic situation that occurred inside that apartment. That is absolutely uh, unbelievable. Uh, Rex Elliott, um, we appreciate you uh, uh, Rex, what happened? Thank you very much for, for your time, Roland. You're doing great work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, folks, back to that my unfiltered video in just one moment. Can you believe the nerve of these Republicans? They only want to block progress for our community. They talk about cutting Medicare and Social Security. They played politics with veterans' health care. They voted against the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and funding for our HBCUs and against lowering prescription drug costs for our seniors. These Republicans keep trying hard to stand in the way, but President Biden, Vice President Harris, and Democrats won't let them. They are delivering for us. The Democratic National Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Checks and money orders go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037- 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 